Welcome geniuses, I'm Genie, your best buddy for A-Levels. In this channel, we'll bring you to explore the secret formula behind success. Hello everyone, today we are going to learn about summation of series, the third chapter of Philomath. So without further ado, let's look at the basic three formulas that you have to memorize. The first is the sum of R. So R is any numbers from 1 to N, where N is infinity, and the general formula of the summation of r, which is like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, is half times n times n plus 1. For the sum of r squared, for example, 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared, etc., is equals to 1 over 6 times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. And for the summation of r cubed, it is 1 over 4 times n squared times n plus 1 squared. So these three formulas you must memorize by heart so that you can apply them in examination. And the second theory that you need to learn or you have to apply in the exam is called the method of differences. For example, we have the summation of fn minus fn plus 1 fn plus 1 is the term after fn. So what this method means is essentially the term in between will cancel each other out. So let's see for example when i equals to 1 then we substitute n as 1 so we have f1 minus f1 plus 1 which is 2 so f2 and when i equals to 2 we have f2 2 minus f3. When i equals to 3, we have f3 minus f4. And so on and so forth until we obtain the n value when i equals to n. Then we have fn minus fn plus 1. So as you can see, there are repeated terms which can be cancelled out. For example, fn can be cancelled out with the previous fn, and f4 can, can, can be cancelled out each other, and f3, f2 as well. So eventually, the whole summation term can be reduced to only f1 minus fn plus 1, as the middle term cancels each other out. Let's now look at an example of how to use the theory that we have just learned. So the question asks us to find the summation of 1 over r times r plus 1. So to use the method of differences, we cannot straight away apply this. So what we can do is to use partial fraction, the one you have learned in P3. So the partial fraction of this fraction, 1 over r times r plus 1, equals to, after you have performed the operations, you get 1 over r minus 1 over r plus 1. So we substitute this back into the original summation equation which the sum of 1 over r plus r plus 1 equals to the sum of 1 over r minus 1 over r plus 1. So it wants us to sum from 1 to n. So we start substituting r equals to 1, so 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4 plus dot 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 because we don't want to write 
all of them out as we can see there are already terms which has started to cancel each other out so we write the second final term which is n minus 1 so 1 over n minus 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1 and we just cancel those terms out so 1 over 2 you can cancel out 1 over 3 you can cancel out and the middle term all of them you can cancel out except the first and the last term so the summation can be now expressed as the first and the last term 1 over 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 which is equal to n over n plus 1 Let's now look at the second example, which is a more complex one. So, you need to find the sum of 2 over r plus 1 times r times r plus 2. So, same step, we start with a partial fraction, which is equals to 1 over r minus 2 over r plus 1 plus 1 over r plus 2. After that, we substitute them again into the original equation. So, the sum of 2 over r times r plus 1 times r plus 2 equals to the sum of 1 over r minus 2 over r plus 1 plus 1 over r plus 2. Where r starts from 1 up until n. So, after that, we will be substituting the numbers into this equation, starting from 1, and then 2, and then 3. So, let's now do that. So, we substitute 1 first. So, 1 over 1 is 1. So, 1 minus 2 over 2 plus 1 over 3. And then, the second term, which is plus 1 over 2 minus 2 over 3 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 3 minus 2 over 4 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 4 minus 2 over 5 plus 1 over 6 and then dot 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 plus 1 over n minus 2 minus 2 over n minus 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 over n minus 1 minus 2 over n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus 1 over n minus 2 over n plus 1 plus 1 over n plus 2 as you can see, this is a rather difficult one because we don't know which one to cancel out. But if you pay proper attention to the numbers, you can see that 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 is 2 over 3. And you can see there is an immediate term minus 2 over 3 in the middle of the second term, which you can then cancel out. And try to find the pattern. Like for example, 1 over 4 and 1 over 4, you can cancel out with minus 2 over 4. So it's like a hamburger, like those two sandwiches and the burger in the middle, you can cancel it out. So similar for 1 over 5, and then 1 over 6, and then the rest, 1 over n minus 2, minus 2 over n minus 1. You can slowly check out which one can be cancelled out. But there are three terms for at the start that you can leave them alone because you can't find anything to cancel them out which are the three terms 1 minus 2 over 2 and 1 over 2 so it must be symmetrical when you're cancelling them out so you have also have to leave the last three terms which are symmetrical with the first three terms like left to right and right to left so what are the three terms so you have the first second and the fourth for the initial one 
so you have to leave the last three so one over n plus one and minus two over n plus one and one over n plus two and see how symmetrical they are okay so the next step is to copy the three initial and the three final terms down which are one minus two over two plus one over two plus one over n plus one minus two over n plus one plus one over n plus two and one minus two over two can then cancel out again so you are left with one over two minus one over n plus one plus one over n plus two and that's your answer for this question let's now move on to the third example so it has given you the identity r which is equivalent to 1 over 2 times r times r plus 1 minus r minus 1 times r and it wants you to find using this identity the summation of sum of r from 1 to n so again we substitute r with the identity so we have the summation of r equals to the summation of half times r times r plus 1 minus r minus 1 times r. And then we can start plugging in values. So when we substitute r equals to 1, we have half times 1 times 2 minus 0 times 1 plus half times 2 times 3 minus 1 times 2 plus half times 3 times 4 minus 2 times 3 and dot 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 and the final two terms plus half times n minus 1 times n minus n minus 2 times n minus 1 plus half times n times n plus 1 minus n plus 1 times n and you can start to see the pattern where you can cancel out so you have 1 times 2 and you have minus 1 times 2 and you can cancel them out you have 2 times 3 you have minus 2 times 3 so you can cancel all these terms out and you can immediately see that 3 times 4 will be cancelled out with the other minus term in the next term so what are you left with with the first one it is the minus 0 times 1 so to be symmetrical we can straight away cancel out the last three terms and leaving n times n plus 1 as your last term so now you copy the two terms down you have half times minus 0 times 1 plus n times n plus 1 which can then be simplified into half times n times n plus 1 and this is how you get the first identity that I've given you in the previous section in the theory section and you need to memorize this identity and similarly for r squared and r cubed as well all right now for the enrichment so there might be occasion where it asks you to sum to infinity so this is when the n is replaced by infinity so if n becomes large and the summation that you get is infinity or negative infinity we can then conclude that the series is divergent so there are a few examples where you can get such kind of terms where the result will give you a very huge number. So for example, first one is fn equals to an plus b. If you think of it, you add n until infinity, then you will eventually get a very huge number because the number is just going to get bigger and bigger then there is no way that you will cancel any term out and making it smaller the other example is 
a times x to the power of n. As you can see, x to the power of n is an exponential term, and it will just get bigger and bigger. Similarly, e times x to the power of n will give the same results. On the other hand, if when n becomes large, but the summation result gives you a finite number or a real number which are not infinite, not positive or negative infinity, then we can conclude that the series is convergent as the number are getting smaller and smaller so you can add up to a finite value. For example, the equation fn equals to a over n plus b. You can see that a over n, as n increases, the a over n term decreases. So since the value is getting smaller and smaller, you can eventually reach a value which is finite. So the other example is a times x to the power of negative n, which is an exponential term, but in this case it decreases exponentially. So we will get a finite value. That's all for today's video. If you are interested in more genuine sharing by other geniuses, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Ding dong. Also, if you're struggling with one or two past your questions, and the March scheme just doesn't seem to help. Genius got you covered. Feel free to let us know what question it is by filling in the Google form linked in the description below. Genius Hub will get genius teachers to fulfill your request for the solution. Genie, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.